Good morning, and welcome to Morning Prayer with St. John's Episcopal Church in Bangor, Maine. Today, the Episcopal Church remembers Ignatius of Loyola. Ignatius was born, born into a noble Basque family in 1491, and he tells us in an autobiography that up to his 26th year, he was a man given over to vanities of the world and took special delight in the exercise of arms and the great and vain desire of winning glory. An act of reckless heroism at the Battle of Pamplona in 1521 led to his being seriously wounded. During his convalescence, Ignatius experienced a profound spiritual awakening, and following his recovery, a call to be Christ's knight in the service of, the, of God's kingdom was deepened and confirmed. He began to share the fruits of, experience, of his experience with others, making use of a notebook which eventually became the text of the spiritual exercises. Since his time, many have found the exercises to be a way of encountering Christ as an intimate companion and responding to Christ's call. Whoever wishes to come with me must labor with me. The fact that Ignatius was an unschooled layman made him suspect in the eyes of the church authorities and led him at the age of 37 to study theology at the University of Paris in preparation for the priesthood. While there, Ignatius gave the exercises to several of his fellow students, and in 1534, together with six companions, he took vows to live lives of strict poverty and to serve the needs of the poor. Thus, what later came to be known as the Society of Jesus was born. Ignatius died on July 31st, 1556, in the simple room which served both as his bedroom and chapel, having sought to find God in all things and to do all things for God's greater glory. His life and teaching, as Evil and Underhill and others have acknowledged, represents the best of the Counter-Reformation. Now let us uh, turn to our Book of Common Prayer and begin morning prayer right to starting briefly on page 78 and then turning to page 80. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Turning to page 80. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. Turning to page 82, let us say together for the Venite. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord, our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The Psalm. This morning we will read Psalm 72, found on page 685, whole verse responsibly. Give the king your justice, O God, and your righteousness to the king's son. That he may rule your people righteously and the poor with justice. That the mountains may bring prosperity to the people and the little hills bring righteousness. He shall defend the needy among the people. He shall rescue the poor and crush the oppressor. He shall live as long as the sun and moon endure from one generation to another. He shall come down like rain upon the mown field, like showers that water the earth. In his time shall the righteous flourish. There shall be abundance of peace till the moon shall be no more. He shall rule from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. His foes shall bow down before him and his enemies lick the dust. The kings of Tashish and the isles shall pay tribute, and the kings of Arabia and Saba offer gifts. 
all kings shall bow down before him, and all the nations do him service. For he shall deliver the poor who cry out in distress, and the oppressed who has no helper. He shall have pity on the lowly and poor. He shall preserve the lives of the needy. He shall redeem their lives from oppression and violence. And dear shall be their blood in his sight. Long may he live, and may they be given to him gold from Arabia. May prayers be made for him always, and may they bless him all the day long. May there be abundance of grain on the earth, growing thick even on the hilltops. May its fruit flourish like Lebanon and its grain like grass upon the earth. May his name remain forever and be established as long as the sun endures. May all the nations bless themselves in him and call him blessed. Blessed be the Lord God, the God of Israel, who alone does wondrous deeds. And blessed be his glorious name forever. And may all the earth be filled with his glory. Amen. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The first lesson. A reading from the book of Judges. The Israelites again did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord strengthened King Eglon of Moab against Israel because they had done what was evil in the sight of the Lord. In alliance with the Ammonites and the Amalekites, he went and defeated Israel, and they took possession of the city of Palms. So the Israelites served King Eglon of Moab 18 years. But when the Israelites cried out to the Lord, the Lord raised, the Lord raised up for them a deliverer, Ehud, son of Gerah, the Benjaminite, a left-handed man, the Israelites sent tribute by him to King Eglon of Moab. Ehud made for himself a sword with two edges, a cubit in length, and he fastened it on his right thigh under his clothes. Then he presented the tribute to King Eglon of Moab. Now Eglon was a very fat man. When Ehud had finished presenting the tribute, he sent the people who carried the tribute on their way. But he himself turned back at the sculptured stones near Gilgal, and said, I have a secret message for you, O king. So the king said, Silence. And all his attendants went out from his presence. Ehud came to him while he was sitting alone in his cool roof chamber and said, I have a message from God for you. So he rose from his seat. Then Ehud reached with his left hand, took the sword from his right thigh, and thrust it into Eglon's belly. The hilt also went in after the blade, and the fat closed over the blade, for he did not draw the sword out of his belly, and the dirt came out. Then Ehud went out into the vestibule and closed the doors of the roof chamber on him and locked them. After he had gone, the servants came. When they saw that the doors of the roof chamber were locked, they thought, he must be relieving himself in the cool chamber. So they waited until they were embarrassed. <laughs> when he still did not open the doors of the roof chamber, they took the key and opened them. There was their Lord lying dead on the floor. Ehud escaped while they delayed and passed beyond the sculptured stones and escaped to Sarah. When he arrived, he sounded the trumpet in the hill country of Ephraim, and the Israelites went down with him from the hill country having him at their head. He said to them, follow after me. For the Lord has given your enemies, the Moabites, into your hand. So they went down after him and seized the fords of the Jordan against the Moabites and allowed no one to cross over. At that time, they killed about 10,000 of the Moabites, all strong, able-bodied men. No one escaped. So Moab was subdued that day under the hand of Israel, and the land had rest 80 years. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The first canticle. We will read, to, read together Canticle 11, found on page 87, the third song of Isaiah. 
Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. For behold, darkness covers the land, deep gloom enshrouds the peoples. But over you the Lord will rise, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will stream to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Your gates will always be open. By day or night, they will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land, ruin or destruction within your borders. You will call your walls salvation and all your portals praise. The sun will no more be your light by day. By night, you will not need the brightness of the moon. The Lord will be your everlasting light and your God will be your glory. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. The second reading. A reading from the book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit, not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will, be, when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the Mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second canticle. We will read together canticle 16, found on page 92, the Song of Zechariah. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father, Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. 
in the tender compassion of our God, that down from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The third lesson. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, this man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran, got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now, when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, truly, this man was God's son. Many women were also there looking on from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee and had provided for him. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Turning to page 96, <clears throat> let us say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all peoples. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal, that we lose not the things eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, from whom all good things come, you called Ignatius of Loyola to the service of your divine majesty and to find you in all things. Inspired by his example and strengthened by his companionship, 
May we labor without counting the cost and seek no reward other than knowing that we do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us now offer our prayers for the church and for the world. We invite you to offer your own as well, either silently or aloud. We pray for the church, for our Anglican communion and Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, for the Diocese of Honduras of the Episcopal Church, for our Episcopal Church and Michael, our presiding bishop, and Sean, our presiding bishop elect, for our Diocese of Maine and our Bishop Thomas. We pray for the congregations of Trinity Chapel in Kennebunk Beach and for St. Martin in the Field in Bitterford Pool. We pray for the sick and those who care for them. We pray for our parish of St. John's, our priest James, and for all our people. We pray for the sick, injured, or distressed, for Joyce, Patricia, Laurie, Katie, and Donald. We offer continued prayers for Shannon, Dolores, John, Kathy, Kelly, Greg, Francisca, Barry, Will, Patricia, Bob, Jenny, Sarah, Ross, James, and Pyong. We pray for our homebound members, including Lily, Erlene, and Eileen. We pray for the world, for peace and goodwill among nations, and for people in places of, of violence and oppression, and for the many places in our world where there is danger and desperation. We continue to pray, especially for the people of Ukraine and the innocent victims of the fighting in Gaza, Sudan, and Haiti, for all suffering effects of climate change and of natural disasters, that the peoples of all nations will find ways to mitigate the climate crisis by cooperating with God's earth, for our enemies and those who wish us harm. And we pray that all people come to realize that the best solution for conflict, whether far or near, is to keep expanding our understanding of who our neighbors are and then love those neighbors as ourselves. We pray for our nation, for the healing of divisions and the celebration of diversity, for the recognition that no single viewpoint on any issue, no matter how important, is without human error, and for all who struggle to change our world and its systems of oppression and exploitation. We pray for the leaders of our country, state, and community, Joseph, our president, members of Congress, including Susan, Angus, Shelley, and Jared of Maine, Janet, our governor, and Kara, our mayor, and for those responsible for administering justice in the courts of this land, that they all may serve our nation and the world with wisdom, civility, and compassion. We pray for our military personnel, especially those of this parish, for Sarah, Dylan, Joshua, and Timothy. We offer prayers of thanksgiving for the lives of those celebrating birthdays during this week, including Catherine, Roger, Jeff, and Oma O. We pray for the departed, for victims of the wars in Ukraine and in the Holy Land, for the many victims of gun violence in this country, and for all who mourn for them. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, Receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you. Through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, 
we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts you may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Turning to page 102, let us say together a prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. This concludes our service of morning prayer for today. We're delighted that you have been able to join us and we hope to see you again soon, perhaps tomorrow. In the meantime, may God bless us all this day.